What if I told you that one of the best projects of last decade came out on the very first night of the year, right on New Year's Day in 2010? What if I told you that that same project wasn't even officially released at that time? It was just tweeted out by the artist as one hour and 10 minute long mp3 file. The album in question is Blue's almost lost follow up to Below the Heavens, called the Godly Barnes LP, also known as God is Good, a soundtrack to life. In a career as prolific and revered as Blue's, this album had the potential to be his most important project, but due to some unlucky circumstances, it was almost lost forever. To understand the importance of this album, but you need to understand where Blue was at the time of making this project. After him and Exile released their critically acclaimed Below the Heavens, Blue was set to become one of the faces of the next generation of rap. He appeared on the very first ever XXL freshman cover, and he was going head to head with artists like Kid Cudi, Wale, and Currency to become the new face of the blog era. With the help of Exile and Mainframe, Blue learned how to produce, and began producing for a number of artists and making beat tapes under the alias The Godly Barnes and his highly anticipated album was set to be mostly self-produced and called The Godly Barnes LP. Unfortunately, his hard drive crashed, leaving the master files to this project to be lost forever. This tragic incident may have derailed the trajectory of Blue's career in the moment, but it may have been a blessing in disguise. When he did eventually release this project as one single long mp3 file via Twitter, the music was unmixed and unmastered, but it didn't matter. Over time the album became a cult classic, one that's legendary status has grown over the years. The fuzzy audio quality of these songs actually adds to the dreamlike sound of the project, and this album helped pave the way for a new wave of lo-fi rap that has only grown in recent years with artists like Earl Sweatshirt and Makami. The alternate title to this project is God is Good, and this perfectly exemplifies how this project feels. It is glorious, a beautiful ode to life and the world. If Below the Heavens had Blue roaming the earth, then God is Good has Blue soaring to the heavens in a victory lap of the soul. The full title to the album is God is Good, a soundtrack to life, and the album takes the listener on a full life journey. The album starts with the old Sony Pictures intro music, leading right into an old stand-up routine, adding to this nostalgic feeling that the album gives you. Even if it's the first time that you ever listen to it, it feels like an old memory of sorts. The opening track is called The Innocent, which captures the innocence of childhood memories, and it closes with tracks like Till We Die and Open Mind Dead, which have Blue reflecting on a full life's worth of memories before metaphorically passing on. Glorious is the third track, but it's the first of many classic blue joints on here. It perfectly sets the tone for the rest of the record, with this beautiful soul sample, singing Glorious, exemplifying the God is Good title. And I love Blue's verse here. He starts it off by saying, that line, I kiss the morning when I wake up and thank God, is such a perfect snapshot of what this album feels like to me. Never Dream is, I'm pretty sure, the lone track here produced by Exile, and it immediately captures the duo's expert chemistry. With a classic Exile soul sampled beat, and Blue spitting two incredible verses, looking back on his dream that he had when he was younger. The Gods in Me is a perfect example of Blue's incredible production style. His beats are sample heavy chopped up loops, with a sort of quirky funness to them. There's this kinetic energy to the track Grandma's Kitchen. This is the type of young chaotic fun track that Blue had mastered on early albums like The Peace Talk and Johnson & Johnson that he sort of matured past in later years. So this track is a gem among the rest of his discography. In fact, this album was released at a very interesting time for Blue. This album came right at the beginning of his prolific run at the beginning of last decade. Within 24 months of this album's release, he put out Her Favorite Color, York, Jesus LP, UCLA, Open, Real Bills, the Norman Rockwell beat tape, and Give Me My Flowers While I Can Still Smell Them. So he was on the cusp of one of the richest runs of artistic expression that hip hop had ever seen. This album feels like the bridging of the first youthful era of his career to the next artistically driven, more experimental phase. The poor audio quality of this record may not have been on purpose, but it unlocked something in how Blue saw his own music paving the way for him to release a number of other unmixed albums in the future, like UCLA, Jesus, and The Blueprint. 
This fuzzy, unmastered quality to his music in this era became something of a trademark for him, and ended up alienating a lot of his fans. But now as lo-fi hip-hop has been gaining popularity over the past half decade with emerging artists like Mike, Earl Sweatshirt, and Makami, we can look back and see how Blue was so ahead of his time. And what seemed like a tragedy when his hard drive crashed may have just helped Blue find the sound that hip-hop was looking for. It's Okay is one of my favorite Blue songs of all time. Ever since I first heard this song, it's been my go-to track when I'm having a bad day and just want some good vibes. It features Myth from Strange Fruit Project and Definite Mass, and the beat is this super chilled out reminder that it's okay, and Blue gives this incredible verse that perfectly exemplifies what it feels like to be navigating through life in your early 20s, and it leads into this very freeing happy-go-lucky hook. The project has great features from staples of Blue's career like Scene, who owns Be Good and On Mars with the Stars, and Cashers King, who's on Difficulties, Smoking at Six in the Mo, City of Lost Angels, and A World Gone Blind. On that last one, after King's verse, the beat switches to a somber Stevie Wonder sample, with Blue spitting one of my favorite verses on the project, which adds gravity to the often lighthearted lyrics of the album. This track has Blue looking at the world and his place in it with a critical eye. Cause this game shit is getting kinda old, it shows hatred is still around the globe. Racism still surrounds us, presidents trying to drown us, and fake shit is now becoming the sound of the soul. My grandpa turned 89 last week, blind out of one eye and still sees peace in the midst of the crime. L.A. shrine of the crime, when nobody sees, the world's gone. It's a friendly Mellow Sunshine is a beautiful little intermission that sounds like the mellow sunshine that it advertises as. I see this as the sunrise after the darkness of the night on the previous track when the world went blind. This track has almost no words except for Blue singing hello, but it possibly is the most hopeful song on the album. As this album nears its end, and Blue symbolically nears the end of his lifespan, this song is the contentness that he feels as he reaches his final days. Which brings me to what is tied for my favorite blue song of all time, and therefore, one of my favorite songs ever made, Till We Die. This song features this beautiful sample that sounds like angels singing, lifting you up to the heavens, and Blue's lyrics are so powerful here. The track has Blue looking back on his life, covering a variety of topics. In the first verse, he deals with becoming a father to his daughter. If the lyrics on this album were published in a poetry book instead of a rap album, Blue could have won a Pulitzer. The second verse really speaks to me. He reflects on his life and his relationship with God as well as the physical world around him, saying, Lessons have been collecting like blessings. The exchange rate is beautiful too. Proving the truth can override anything but love. So God bless you. Timeless life is stressless fights with us. I try to put my life love up above you, but God, mom, music, movies, moving the world with the duty to truly be something worthy of. Lavish ass paths and cars and all kind of devices must be nice if happiness is priceless. This song never fails to put things in perspective, truly one of the most beautiful tracks I've ever heard, and the beat melts right into the next track, Crowns, which is yet another example of lyrical brilliance. Three verses, each revolving around his ego and him learning to leave it along with his crown if he wants to reach the best version of himself. And that brings us to the outro, called Open Mind Dead. This is a solo track from none other than Miguel. Before he was one of the biggest pop stars in the world, Miguel was childhood friends with Blue, who appeared on a lot of his early work. It's interesting to me that there's probably some die-hard Miguel fans out there who probably think they've heard everything he's ever done, but they have no idea that this song even exists. It's like this little gem that only those lucky enough to find it can have. His singing is beautiful as always, and brings this album full circle, singing Wake Up, Wake Up, feeling like both the beginning and end of a beautiful life. And that's the end of the main album, but there are two bonus tracks to close it out. Benevolent Offering and Benediction, which truly closes out the project, and also My Boy Blue, which is the song that's tied with Till We Die as my favorite Blue track ever. And while Till We Die perfectly represents Blue's introspective and thoughtful side, My Boy Blue is one of the most fun rap songs I've ever heard. Blue spits these incredible quotables and playful punchlines over the happiest piano sample and samples from De La Soul and the movie Old School. The song shows that when he's having fun, 
There's no other person on earth who can rap like Blue. Thank you for watching everybody. I had so much fun making this video, which is truly one of my favorite albums of all time. Make sure to go check out this album on Bandcamp, it is truly something special. If you enjoyed this video and want to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, that is always appreciated. I try to put out a video every one to two weeks, so I got a lot more headed your way. Thanks for watching.